Greetings and welcome to our worship. As the, uh, the dog days of summer begin to come upon us, as we get into the middle of July and, and the heat is around us, the harvest is growing. I was over by one of the, um, the cornfields and there's a cornfield by our house, right by Jim Zanter Park, and there's an outhouse there. And that corn is almost outhouse high. I mean, it is just going, going great guns. And you know, that's a sign that God is with us. As much as we sometimes feel in the midst of these difficult days, we kind of wonder, has God abandoned us? Go look at the cornfields and you tell me, has God abandoned us? No. God is still with us and the gifts of God still surround us. So as we worship this day, we give thanks for God's gifts of grace. We bring to God our cares and our concerns and we hear God's word of hope. Thank you for joining us. Let's worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought word, and deed. Please join me as we proclaim our confidence in the love of God that restores and forgives us. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him 
that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crew crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. If such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and in another thirty. Here ends the word of the Lord. Salem, 
We weren't even going to try a garden. What was the point? Apparently, we just didn't have that green thumb. But as time has gone on, our hearts began to soften. Nostalgia began to creep in. And we began to ponder the thought, what if we tried again? So, in the midst of COVID and staying home, we decided the time was right to take that leap. We dug up a patch of grass and planted raspberries, tomatoes, cucumbers, green peppers, and zucchini. The raspberries had gotten off to a rocky start, but we're still hopeful. The rest of the crops, gangbusters so far. The actual fruits of our labors, of course, are yet to be seen. Now, if only the fence that we first ordered at the end of May and have reordered for the fourth time this week would just arrive in one piece rather than all being broken, but I digress. So why is it that gardens grow well in Riverside, not so much in Gladstone, and maybe well again in West Salem? All were tended to by caring, nurturing gardeners, Never mind that one was born and raised on a farm in Nebraska, while the other came from that great agricultural mecca known as New York City. The seeds and sets were presumably healthy. The weather and climate were conducive to growing, sun, rain, and warmth. So what was it? What was different? Easy. It was the soil. The soil in Gladstone was sandy really sandy, under a thin layer of topsoil, pure sand, and lots of it. And in Riverside, good Midwestern growing dirt, just like West Salem. But more than just the dirt, the soil. The difference in the soil in Riverside versus the soil in Gladstone and West Salem is that the garden in Riverside was well established year after year. Dad would rototill the soil, turning under the remains of the harvested plants and the grass clippings that he would put around the plants as they grew. The soil was nurtured by what had been. In Gladstone and here, the gardens were new and fresh. A layer of grass had to be removed first. In Gladstone, the earth beneath the topsoil was sandy. The seeds were planted and started to grow but the sand didn't provide the nutrients they needed, and the roots were never solidly in the ground, so the plants withered and died. Here, the seeds were planted, but there were still traces of the old grass deep down, and when the seeds started to grow, so also did the grass, and the grass began to crowd out the new plants and interfere with the new seeds fighting for the nutrients in the soil soil and seeds. Jesus was talking about soil and seeds. At first reading of our gospel text, we may think the seeds are the point of the story. Seeds that didn't get buried in the ground, or seeds that started to grow but were easily uprooted, or seeds that got choked out, or seeds that blossomed and grew and produced much fruit. But if we dig a bit deeper into the reading, maybe it's the soil that we need to be focusing on. The soil is what makes or breaks it for the little seed. The soil is what provides the nutrients and nurtures the seed to grow or crowds it out or doesn't hold on to it and allows the seed to wither and die. So what is the soil? Sandy UP soil? Good Midwestern dirt? Neither one. It's you, and it's me. It's us. We, as the people of God, are the soil Jesus is speaking about. Think about your life. The seed is planted at our baptism when we are washed in the waters of the font. And as the oil is placed on our forehead, we hear the words, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. In our baptism, we receive the promise that we are claimed as children of God, our sins are forgiven, and life eternal awaits us. 
What becomes of the seed is up to us. Sometimes the seed falls on a hardened path. It just lays there on the top, never finding a place to take root. We receive the promise, the gift of life in baptism, and that's where it all starts. But that's also where it stops. We don't even try to make God a part of our lives. We don't even try to have faith. We will tell you that we are going around doing good things, being a good person, but we don't need God to do that. We provide the birds, the seeds that lay on top of the path. Sometimes the seed falls on rocky soil, where it starts to grow quickly, but never really is able to take root. We start out being faithful just because. Just because that's what we've been taught. Just because that's what we've known. Just because. But when th things are going well, we tend to have the mindset that we can do things on our own. We're good to go. We don't need Jesus to help us. And pretty soon, Jesus falls by the wayside. Sometimes the seed falls on soil amongst the thorns, where it takes root and is growing. But then other things also start to grow, and those other things end up taking over. They take all of the energy away from the seed, and it gets choked out. We are taught well, our faith is strong, but as time goes on, life happens, and we are pulled in so many different directions, family, friends, sports, beautiful weather, work, school, keeping up with the neighbors. Our priorities change, and Jesus gets choked out. And sometimes, the seed falls on good soil, where the roots grow deep, and receive the nurture and care that allow the seed to flourish and grow and produce fruit abundantly. We learn about Jesus, we have faith, and our love for Jesus is rooted in our hearts. It is Jesus who guides our ways and is ever present in our lives. Life is not always easy. We live in a broken world that is becoming more and more divided. Wars of many causes rage on, Mother Nature plays havoc with our weather at this time of the year. We are given diagnoses of cancer or terminal illnesses. COVID-19 has changed life as we knew it and has caused some not to accept our new normal. But our grounding in Jesus, all that has prepared our very soil, allows that which is planted in us to bear fruit and grow a hundredfold. But good soil doesn't just appear like magic out of nowhere. Remember, good soil is the product of last year's growth. It takes the plants that have died the previous season and that have been tilled back into the soil to provide the nutrients for the new seeds that are planted. It is out of death that new life comes. Where have I heard that before? In the death and resurrection of Jesus, we are given new life. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, our soil has been enriched with all that we need to allow the seed to grow and bear fruit abundantly. Our lives have been nourished and fed by those who have gone before us so that we may grow and bear fruit. And we then become the ones who nourish and enrich those that come after us so they too can bear fruit and grow. It is the cycle of life. It is the cycle of our spiritual life. So what kind of soil are you? Lord, let my heart be good soil. Amen.
Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given us. Hear us, O oh God. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray also for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who seek healing, especially Rebecca, Tracy, and Jonathan, restore them to wholeness. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted, that we might grow as disciples. 
Replace what has been depleted, sustain our ministries, and deepen relationships with the community around us. Hear us, O oh God. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the gift of new life in the birth of Quinn Ray. Walk with her on this journey and claim her as your own. Hear us, O oh God. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died, especially Joyce and Patrick. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Surround their families with your care. Hold them in your embrace. Remind us that you are the giver of life and the holder of all life. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's peace. The peace, the peace of the Lord, Lord be with you. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those who are in the room with you. And if you are watching by yourself, know that God's peace transcends even the distance between us. Again, as always, we want to thank you for your support of this congregation. Your financial support and your prayer support are both absolutely essential as we carry out the work that God calls us to do. And on the screen, you can see the web address for our electronic giving page. Uh, go to that page. There are a number of ways you can make electronic gifts. Uh, or you can simply mail a gift in to the church, and uh, we'll take it from there. But again, we thank you for your, your ministry and support. I want to share with you one of our ministries. It's a very timely ministry at this point of the year, and that is our Mission Endowment Fund. Um, about, oh, 15 years, maybe a little bit more than that, this congregation made the decision to place some large bequest monies into an endowment fund, not for the purpose of paying our bills, but in order to do perpetual ministry in the world. And so what we do is we take bequests, the, the uh, most of any bequest that comes to this congregation, or if it is designated for the endowment fund, all of the bequest. And we also receive a number of smaller gifts. And we have them in an endowment fund in which we use the earnings and not the principal. Right now, currently, we're hearing the earnings are about $16,000 a year. And that money goes to all sorts of great programs and ministries in our community and beyond. Places like the La Crosse Warming Center, the Salvation Army, the St. Clair Health Mission, Sugar Creek Bible Camp, uh, World Hunger, all those kinds of organizations, whether they are faith-based or not, that meet human needs, have been able to receive support from our endowment fund. And they need that support. They rely on that kind of support to be able to do the work that they do. So I'd like you to think about two things. The first thing is I would like to invite you to consider contributing to the work of the Endowment Fund. A one-time gift of any size is always welcome. Um, sometimes people will also uh, <clears throat> make a regular gift. You might also consider making it part of your planned giving, your estate planning. Um, we, the, as I said, if we receive a bequest, most of that bequest, unless it is designated otherwise, goes into our Endowment Fund to be able to make a difference in the world around us. The second thing I would invite you to do is kind of keep your eyes open these days. Uh, in the month of September, throughout the month of September, we will be looking for suggestions 
on where the endowment monies that will be distributed in January of next year, where they can go. And so, you know, kind of watch and see, are there programs, are there ministries that you see making a difference that you would suggest that we consider? Uh, there are a few guidelines, they're not real extensive. If you'd like a copy of them, you can contact the church office and we'll share those with you. But for the most part, if an organization meets human needs, right here in, in West Salem, in La Crosse County, in, in the country, or even in the world, we'll at least take a look at it, and there's a good chance it might get some support. So if you see something worthy, something making a difference, let us know about it. Again, thank you for your support of this congregation in so many ways. You are a gift to us. God be with you. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. To witness forgiveness through the cross, Life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would you pray with me? God of all power and love, we give thanks for your, your unfailing presence and hope you provide in the midst of a very uncertain and uneasy journey. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, that even where COVID strikes fear, we may proclaim your way of hope. Where racism creates divides, we may proclaim your word of acceptance and unity. Where our own abilities fail us, we may hear your word of restoration. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus.
God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.